overwhelming it. He was, if you will, a fantastic generalist. And one of the things he had a particular skill for was understanding what the dangers of an enemy having radar technology was going to do to Great Britain. In 1939, a mysterious package was found just outside the British Embassy in Oslo, Norway. It was forwarded to Jones, since it contained top-secret documents that appeared to outline Germany's amazing advances in radar and rocket technology. Many in the British intelligence community thought the report was a hoax, but Jones believed its authenticity. This became known as the Oslo Report, and Jones would often refer to its contents. Jones learned that the Germans were beaming very high radio frequencies at Britain from Kleve on the German-Dutch border and from Schleswig-Holstein near Denmark. He presented these findings to Churchill, who gave him the go-ahead to carry out countermeasures. This led, in fact, to several actual uses of armed force by the British to actually reach out and grab pieces of German radar technology uh, so that they could evaluate it and see where it was going. British intelligence discovered that Freya, the Norse goddess of beauty, was the German code name for a certain type of radar. Freya was used to search the ether for long-range threats. Another model called Würzburg could detect threats at short range and direct searchlights to expose RAF bombers in the night sky. Jones and his team had a reasonable understanding of Freya technology, but the Würzburg was still a mystery. Countermeasures had to be found to neutralize the system if the Allies hoped to recapture the European continent. Around 1 a.m. on February 27th, 1942, 119 Scottish paratroopers were dropped behind enemy lines in northern France near saint Bruneval. One group held the beach, another secured the villa, and a third stormed the radar facility. A technician, C.W.H. Cox, a movie projectionist before the war, was chosen to dismantle the Würzburg radar. Cox was supposed to have half an hour to dismantle the Würzburg. But mortar fire forced Major John D. Frost, the commander of the mission, to order an early retreat. Cox still managed to remove the German contraption in half the time. The Würzburg was loaded on a cart and pulled down to the beachhead with mortar rounds exploding everywhere. The paratroopers were able to find the beach and help their comrades escape onto a waiting Navy landing craft. By 2.30 a.m., one of the most daring operations of the war was over. It was a decisive blow. German air defenses along the coast were now partially blind, allowing RAF bombers easier access to the European continent. <laughs> 